Well, one of my earliest memories when I was a kid, when I was about three years old, I had two other brothers, and we used to go swimming in a mill pond. And my brother, older brothers would jump into that mill pond, and I followed them right in. I didn't have any idea what I was doing. And I remember sinking down beneath the water and understanding that I had to get up there somehow, back to the air, and I, I didn't know how to do it. I woke up, I was sitting in a chair, my father had fished me out of there, and the first thing I smelled was a spruce tree. And I said, every time I smell a Colorado blue spruce, I say, ah, you're a lifesaver. You know, trees give us everything. I think, you know, they give us oxygen. So what I do is I go out and hug a tree every day. I teach biology to non-majors and I explain to them if it weren't for trees, they simply wouldn't be here. So go out and hug a tree every day. And uh, they're just magnificent uh, organisms. We owe everything to trees. It all starts with the primary producers. And as far as I'm concerned, trees are the, the kings and queens of the primary producers. So we just have to admire these things. Well, they certainly are part of the natural evolutionary process. The problem right now is the rate at which it's happening. These things happen in what we call evolutionary time. These are eons, these are millennia, those are the time frames. What we've done now is we've compressed down that evolutionary time scale into an ecological time scale. So what this means is that where plants once had the opportunity to evolve and adapt to that new pest, that new insect or disease that was coming, we've compressed it so quickly by putting these things together through globalization, global trade, we've now created a global biota in a very short time frame. And frankly, these associations that maybe take eons to evolve are happening in the period of years. So this is why the systems are a little bit out of control right now and why we're seeing the, the wild scale loss of trees in North America over here in Eurasia as we put these new organisms that have never had a chance to be together, throwing them together very quickly without the time to make that, that evolutionary adjustment. So it's really the time frame, the compression. This is also compounded, of course, by the very, very rapid warming of our world. This creates new opportunities for these invasive pests. Generation times of insects and diseases compress, ranges change. And in the built environment, the urbanized environment where we have heat sinks, that problem of global warming is simply exacerbated. So all the problems associated with those factors uh, are magnified. So the rate of invasion, the shrinking of that evolutionary time scale, the rapid warming of the world, and this process of urbanization that's taken place all over our planet they're basically conspiring now in a very short time and creating an experiment we've never seen before in the history of the planet. Simply the best thing I think we can do, number one, we got to create more green space. Okay, so that means city planners now have to allocate space within the built environment for more trees, shrubs, herbaceous plants. The other key to this is diversification. Too long historically, we've depended on single species, the Dutch elm disease problem with too many elm trees planted worldwide. Here in the States, the replacement of elm trees with ash trees and with maple trees, the host of emerald ash borer, Asian longhorn beetle, we simply haven't learned the lesson yet of biodiversity and how important it is. Biodiversity is mother nature's buffer in an uncertain world, so we need more diversity, we need more green spaces in our city, and we've got to cut down on that impervious surface whenever we can. So that means when we're planning hardscape, we should be thinking pervious surface, not impervious surface, and we need to take advantage of that wonderful resource up on top of those buildings. We need more green roofs. We need to make every possible inch green to help fix carbon and reverse that problem associated with climate change. The planet's gonna go in a very dark way without trees, so what we have to do is we have to help society understand the most important services that trees provide, 
and find ways to preserve these ecosystem services and make the entire forest, not only the, the natural forest, but that urban forest more sustainable. I think the key here to get trees on the screen is education. What we need to do is we need to get a grassroots effort. We need to help people, the average citizen, understand the contribution that trees make to their environment, to their way of life, to the quality of life, everything from aesthetic beauty, the increasing of property values, the key role that the green infrastructure plays in fixing carbon and reversing climate change, and fundamentally, the health benefits of having trees. We know when we have green in cities that people are generally happier, crime rates go down, and people that are ill in a hospital, if they can look at green trees rather than the side of a building, they're going to get they're going to get healthier quicker. They're going to get well quicker. We found in cities that have been defoliated and have lost their tree cover due to emerald ash borer, rates of things like heart disease are actually increasing. So this intimate association that we have with plants and understand that we share about 50% of our genes with plants. We're actually half a plant. We, we have an evolutionary history with these organisms and I think we need to understand that they help make our world go around. So getting that information out to the general public is probably the most important thing we can do as arborists. I think people are finally understanding. I think some of the environmental crises we've, we've faced here with things like your Chilera here in the UK with our emerald ash borer have really opened people's eyes to the importance of trees and it's provided a real opportunity for educating and getting people on board with this. So even though these disasters are, are very difficult and disruptive, the other piece of this puzzle, I think we finally have the attention of people and, and they can understand what the value and importance of these, these wonderful organisms uh, really are. Well, I was out there hugging some maples earlier today and a little bit later on I'm going to go hug that giant you. Might get some interesting looks around here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, trees. You know, what's better, than, what's better than hanging out with a tree, huh? Well, maybe hanging out with a friend, you know, or something like that, or a partner is good. But, you know, hanging out with trees is pretty good, too. Just makes you feel better being out in the trees, doesn't it? It really does. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's with that.